The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Uh, before we get to talking about this week's movie, Natasha here is right next to me. And uh, it, 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 uh, amazing, this woman, her voice is beautiful. She sang a beautiful song about Supernatural during the break. Honey. Do you think that you could sing that song for us? She's holding up her middle finger, which to Natasha is her way of telling me that I'm number one. Yes. And that all others are number two or lower. She shows me that number one finger all of the time. So, but it also, it it also means she's sidestepping the question. Yeah. She's yeah. probably embarrassed because we're recording the, the podcast now. and it, That was good, but this was more of a song about how you love the Supernatural guys and, and Kaz and how you want to do them, and it was beautiful. And it was kind of like an aria, and like you were in tears. Yeah, it was like an operatic sort of song, and you were in tears a little bit. Was I? Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Kaz! You know, if, you're nervous, you don't ha- if you're nervous, you don't have to do it right now on the show, honey. It's okay. Cass, he plays the angel on Supernatural. He's played by Misha Collins. Yeah. He's blown away that he can have a lengthy conversation about Supernatural while also having <laughs> no interest in Supernatural. But that's how Supernatural fandom works. <laughs> Even people who don't know Supernatural... I'm dragging you all down with me. It's like yes. that game Othello. Like, you put one black piece around all the white pieces, and eventually all the white pieces turn black. <laughs> that supernatural fandom. One person is a fan, and now it's slowly seeping to all the other pieces around you. <laughs> yeah. The microphone was down here. There's a tiny one. Yeah, if you want to. Here you go. So, Bunny, this yes. week on the show, we are doing a recent, expensive, Big budget explosion, Tom Cruise super action blockbuster. Yes. But here's the thing. I was all set to talk about Universal Studios. The long history of Universal Studios. It has such a long and rich and interesting history. And the history of Universal Studios really is uh, the history of movies. Movies itself. And we were going to have a focus in that on the heyday of classic universal monster movies. Dracula, Frankenstein, The Invisible Man, Mm -hmm. Zombies of Moratow, Lawrence of Arabia. I was going to talk about the history of mummy movies in general, from Karloff to Abbott and Costello to Christopher Lee Mm -hmm. to freaking Brendan Fraser. Yes. With an aside that was going to be really fun, which was to be titled... What the fuck happened to Brendan Fraser? Yes. He was literally in everything. Yes, he was. And he was even in an Academy Award winning movie. Yes, of course. That's a blast from the past. Where he's the guy who was in the bomb shelter. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. He won Best Bomb Shelter. (laughs) But what, what the hell happened to Brendan Fraser? He was in everything. He was in every movie. You always saw his face. And people mm-hmm. loved him. What the hell happened to him? I don't know when the last time was I saw him. I have a good idea who might know where he is, though. And that would be Lou Diamond just, Phillips. Oh, Lou Diamond Phillips. You know, that, that that's an even better guess than the guess that I made. That's probably right. Um, Honey. Honey. Slowly pivoting. Pivot, pivot, pivot over to you. Brendan Fraser was in two movies, one called Dudley Do Right, mm-hmm. and then he followed that up with another film called uh, George Over the Jungle. Yeah. Now, personally, I like to think that this is part of a trilogy, but he hasn't done the third film yet. But we demand a third Rocky and Bullwinkle themed film from yes. Brendan Fraser. God damn it. It, it, he's old enough to do Aesop's and Sons the movie now. 
Where's Brendan Fraser's fractured fairy tale? Something, anything. Mm -hmm. Brendan Fraser is Tennessee tuxedo. (laughs) I need something from this man. You can't make two Rocky and Boinkle centered live action movies and just leave us hanging for the finishing of the trilogy. Mm -hmm. But George of the Jungle, honey. What do you have to say about George of the Jungle? Seriously, you're putting me on the spot like yes, this? Yes, I am. I, if I knew you were going to do that, I would have looked up the thing. It's okay. And, it's and okay. It's not okay. It's okay. How dare Natasha you? Natasha was telling me about this... Tumblr post? Tumblr post okay. about people who really seem to be impressed with the movie George of the Jungle. It's my understanding that um, George of the Jungle gets things right in that the sort of inherent sexism in most Hollywood movies is reversed. Yeah. So that, oh, here is the attractive man near shirtless, all sweaty with muscles. And here is the woman who I is... I mean, for fuck's sake! I've never even seen this film. Do you see that? Yeah, no. Look he's... at that. Yeah, no. They've oiled him up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm serious, bunny. Like I've never seen this movie ever in my entire She's life. Me I've gifts. I've seen George of the Jungle. I kind of liked it, but like he's standing there and oiled up and just what the fuck? Yeah, the, <laughs> the yeah the the sexism is reversed. Basically, yeah. it's on about the female gaze and how the woman is more appreciative of George. That like kind of like men are with women normally in movies, and her boyfriend or whoever the fuck is—I don't know—I've never seen the movie. And the film is kind of an asshole, mm-hmm. and yet the guy who was raised in a fucking jungle has better manners and keeps his paws off of her and is more respectful of her and shit than the people who are supposedly civilized. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating to me. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. I, I yeah. like a lot of Brendan Fraser movies just because they're so stupid. Yeah. And they're so, they're so, the computer wore tennis shoes. You know? Yeah. They're, they're like very yeah. much a throwback to those weird live action Disney movies. Yeah. Love Brendan Fraser, and the first Mummy movie was uh, really, 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 really good. And then the second Mummy movie was okay, but everyone who watched that second Mummy movie went, "Hey, what's the name of this guy? No, his real name. Oh, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Huh. Well, first off, no one will ever know him by that name. <laughs> okay, let's all be clear, all of us in the audience for the Mummy too." The Scorpion King. Yes. No one's ever going to remember the name of Dwayne Johnson. No, <laughs> let's talk about The Rock. The Rock kind of has something going here. Sure, right now he can't act his way out of a paper bag. And he's more uh, CGI than actor. But still, there's something in this uh, the, the Rock that might be interesting. Yeah. So now if he played Conan, I would be down for that. You know, I mean, the remade of Conan with, no, no, um, (laughs) The Rock. He did play Conan. He did a Conan. No, he did a Hercules. Oh, he did a Hercules. There you go. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm getting my, I'm getting my, uh, sword and sandals epics confused. Mm -hmm. So we were even going to discuss batshit hyperactive action gnome Thomas J. Cruz. Yes. I don't know if that's his middle name, but. And if I was feeling particularly saucy, Mm -hmm. I was even going to once again take on Scientology. Then I saw this week's movie. Yes. And it was so meh. Uh Uh-huh. So lifeless, so soulless, so written in a boardroom by a committee of guys named Brad wearing expensive suits that I... I tapped out. Yes. I tapped out. I'm done with this. I just tapped out of Tom Cruise. I just tapped out. How much you want to bet that what's her name uh, did that too while they were married? I bet Katie Holmes tapped out a couple of times. Yes. Mm-hmm. To Tom Cruise and his hyperactive couch hopping. <laughs> I, had, I had high hopes, my little bunny mummy. 
I had high hopes, but then I saw this movie, and now... Fuck it. Let's lightly discuss this movie and get it the fuck over with. I'm not going to bend over backwards for Tom Cruise's The Mummy. This film doesn't warrant my time, our time. Right. So, so basically, this- Universal is doing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. We're, yes, yes, we're yes. not doing anything original here. This movie, there's nothing in there to really grab me, you know? Um, first off, the mummy as a character itself and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are not particular favorites of mine. But that's, you know, that's okay. There, but- are, there are better movies to start out your shared cinematic universe with. I don't know why in the world you would start out with The Mummy, because you've got such a massive... You, you've got much better universal monsters to play with here. You mm-hmm. know, like Dracula, Frankenstein, The Invisible Man, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Phantom of the Opera, The Wolfman, also technically The Metalunans. Yes. But I've never been a big fan of the freaking mummy. It's always just an old person. But then the, mm. the old person kills some people, gets younger, and there's magic. And then, the, it, like, there, there's nothing exciting about the mummy. Yes. And even <clears throat> with that, they took a lot from the Brendan Fraser movie. In fact, I read in some website, it may, have, it may have been Entertainment Weekly, I'm not sure. But there's one scene where I believe the, the stock female... Mm-hmm. knocks a guy out with just some random book she grabs from the shelf. Yeah. She randomly grabs some book on the shelf and knocks out a security guard with it. And for one second, you see the book as it falls down. And I'm pretty goddamn sure that that is the book of the dead from Brendan Fraser's The Mummy. <laughs> Probably. So I'm pretty sure that although this is a reboot, that it is still set in that freaking Brendan Fraser universe. Yeah. That's my new word for the Brendan Fraser universe. Tom the Cruise. Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Tom Cruise was doing a really bad Chris Pratt impersonation, and he yes. needs to ease up on the Botox. Well, uh, first of all, two things. Two things. Number one, I never finished the intro. Okay, so this sorry. week on the Pope on Film, we are discussing the 2017 Dark Universe disappointment, The Mummy, or as it's called in Spanish, Pedazo Abrido de Mierda. Mm-hmm. You were expecting me to say something funny, but no, that's Spanish for boring piece of shit. Yes. Booyah! <laughs> that's number one. So next, Exhibit Q. I want to start this movie... On a positive note, it's all about the pause, the yes. positivity. So that being said, it is always fun to see Tom Cruise get shot at. Yes, it is. If there's one thing I like. It's seeing Tom Cruise get beaten up, get his face <laughs> smashed in. I like seeing Tom Cruise get strangled. There's something wonderful about seeing Tom Cruise die in a plane crash in this movie. <laughs> I'm not in any way threatening this man. I'm just saying he's an amazing actor and you really feel for his emotions. So when you see him die in a fiery plane crash, you're like, yes. And for me, Tom Cruise is much like Michael Jackson. I, I, I do not like Tom Cruise. I, I, in fact, I really can't stand him. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. he has always been a very good actor, you know? And yeah. I, I had even seen Jack Reacher and, and enjoyed it quite a lot, you know? Yeah. This is like the worst fucking Tom Cruise performance I think I've ever seen. And again, it's amazing the similarities between Tom Cruise's The Mummy and Chris Pratt's Jurassic World, both done by the same companies. It's ridiculous. Number yeah. one, they yeah. both have the funny guy. This is an actor in both of these films. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, Tom Cruise is just Chris Pratt, Chris Pratting it up. Mm-hmm. It, 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 yeah, it's ridiculous. This is the exact same movie. And, uh, okay. Uh, and, one, and, uh, and, and the lift from American, I, I feel that this is a lift from American Werewolf in London that you, you have your dead, funny friend tell yes. you that you're cursed. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and frankly, first off, his friend wasn't that fucking funny, you know? And I saw other things in the movie where it was kind of like, that was probably funny in the theater, you know? There were things that I, that I saw that I did not laugh at, but I could see if you were in a theater setting, it would get a chuckle from the crowd. Yeah. And that's really part Action of what movies. I felt was missing is that it really needs more humor. Yeah. Action movie funny is different from real funny. Yeah. Yeah. This movie was very action movie funny, but not real funny. But as Universal fans, I, I, I think what we really want is is to get back to where these movies were fun, you know? I mean, yeah. I, I love Frankenstein. I love the original Frankenstein movie, you know? And, like, that's one thing. And we've had hundreds of retellings of the Frankenstein story. So, that like, that's in a different class, you know? But I want to see the goofier ones, like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman or, or House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula. You know, yeah. I think this is what we want to see. Now, see, I would like for them to go a, the, a different way. Because when I see classic Universal films, what, the, the words that come to mind is dark, spooky, atmospheric, you yeah. know, gothic dark again mm -hmm. these are the words that come to mind but it, there's none of that no in this movie they You're just right. literally said let's get this dark moody atmospheric universal film and turn it into just another tom cruise action film the, i i feel that there's very little difference between like a jack reacher or a mission impossible 12 or the mummy yeah that there's very little difference there. They just got, they got a universal film and they Tom Cruise did up. Yes. This yes. film is why I am glad that Will Smith said no to Django Unchained. Yes. Very much so. Oh my God. That would have been horrible. Yeah. I feel like, like how, how much of this is universal missing the mark and how much of this is Tom Cruise saying, well, we need this to be more of a me film. Mm hmm You know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's and, nothing of interest in this movie. There's nothing to love in this film. And I was watching the powers of this mummy, okay? And I yep. was like, well, you know, how's Frankenstein going to fight that? You know? How's the yes. Wolfman going to fight that? Dracula might have a chance because he's got, like, magical powers and shit. You know, you could probably yeah. do something there. But I'm like, okay, we kind of have an unbeatable villain until I get to the movie and I start shrieking. Yeah. You know, because I, I don't know what you got out of this. I got Tom Cruise is the mummy. I, I, I felt like Tom Cruise is some sort of, like, weirdo god. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's the mummy, but but yeah, Tom Cruise is a god now. Yeah. So what what I saw was whenever something bad happens in the universe, they're going to try and go to him for help. Yeah. Then now Tom Cruise is like the savior of this universe, basically. Which does not give me a good feeling. No, no, not a, oh, wait a moment. So, if you're close, if you close your eyes, if you're watching this film and you close your eyes, yes, you can see like the suits at Universal saying, "We want this film to be different. We want this film to be completely different." I've got an idea. What if the mummy was a chick? Great idea. That's all the characterization we will need. <laughs> the mummy's a girl now. Mm-hmm. That's just as far as they got. I had such high hopes for this movie and the whole Dark Universe series that that it, I always thought it was weird growing up that like, hey, Universal is sitting on some of the greatest monster movies of all time. Yeah. Why are you doing nothing with this? 
So when I heard of the idea for the Dark Universe, I'm like, okay, number one, that's a stupid fucking name. But number two, this has the chance of being something really big. You're getting these big stars, and you're making, you're rebooting this entire universe, and it's a shared universe, and this is going to be good. But there's just no life to this no. at all. No. There's just nothing exciting here. I've already seen Hellboy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's it. We're going to build up a secret society of monster fighters, you know. So it's it's the Avengers, it's Agent of Shield, it's Hellboy. It's, you know, I've seen this a million fucking times. The only part of this film that I got excited for is when Tom Cruise is taken to like the secret government headquarters and he's going through and he's looking around at everything like the collector and yeah. guardians of the galaxy he's looking at all this shit and there's a jar with a hand and it's obviously a creature from the black lagoon hand mm -hmm. and i got so excited and i geeked out at that black lagoon hand but then it's like okay that's the only exciting part of this film and also um we're an hour into this film and i'm excited about seeing a pickled jar with a hand of a better character. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like, that's not a good review of this film, that I'm excited to see the creature from the Black Lagoon for three seconds. Yes. Oh my God, look at that. It's the creature from the Black Lagoon sand. That would have been a better movie. Also, you know, I know that times have changed and now we can watch like Saw 12 and have like eyeballs popping out of sockets, but technically these classic universal films were horror movies. Yes. But this is not a horror movie. They got no. the mummy and turned it into a generic big budget action movie. This is mission impossible 12. This is Jurassic world three. This isn't a universal horror film. No. What are your thoughts on Russell Crowe as a print and Proper Dr. Jekyll slash. Um, oddly, oddly, with uh, with what I said about Dr. Dr. Jekyll earlier, I kind of liked Russell Crowe's bit. Like, yeah, he it was, was like the only, the only real bit in the movie that I, that I felt any engagement with. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the whole, hey, guess what? I'm the Nick Fury of this. Yes. Guess mm -hmm. what, everybody? I'm Nick Fury. Expect me in everything. Yay! I don't know how Dr. Jekyll's going to appear at a Castle Frankenstein, but, you know, whatever. I'm also Yeah, but, you know, but in this universe, you know, if we're going modern times, which I think is a big mistake, I want I wanted Dark Shadows Gothic. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah then Frankenstein would have to please my God would have to stumble into the world somehow, you know? Yeah. You, you can't just don't give me another fucking Frankenstein movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't give me creating the monster and all that. Nobody does not know Frankenstein. That's why I was kind of excited at, at the fact that there's a small possibility that they could turn it around in 2019 with Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. That's the next film in the dark universe. God, I hate saying that. Every time I say that, a part of my soul dies. <laughs> Every time I say dark universe, oh, it's so, oh, it's so depressing. So... But it's really got to be a Frankenstein that was created way back when and has <laughs> lived this whole time. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of something different. See, I love the original Bride of Frankenstein as uh, longtime fans of the Pope on Film podcast know. Yes. So there are some things I need from this upcoming movie. Okay. What do you need? Two things. Number one, there better be a flaming gay scientist up in this bitch. Yes. There better be a gay, super gay, massively gay, in-your-face gay, flaming gay, uh, Rip Taylor gay. I would be down with that, and I would also be down with upping 
upping the homoerotica. Yes. The homoerotic nature of the movie. <clears throat> yeah, because you can do that now. The American mm-hmm. Family Association will get pissed, but they get pissed every every other week. Yeah. So number one. That's that's number one. So now exhibit Q. There had better be a fucking Leva. A Leva, yes. A Leva. A Leva. Look out! A Leva! If there is not a flaming gay scientist in a Leva, I am rioting in that theater. I am I am throwing chairs. Now, this might be difficult because those chairs are really, uh, like, bolted down, so I might have to actually go to the theater beforehand with, like, a, like a screwdriver and pre-loosen the seats. Yeah. Or just bring my own chairs. Either way, there's going to be a riot all up in there. Mm-hmm. I need a flaming gay scientist and a Leva inside my Bride of Frankenstein reboot. <laughs> Period. Mm-hmm. Serious about this. I'm so serious about this. But there's some bad news for the upcoming Bride of Frankenstein film because originally it was going to come out like in 2019. Uh, you know, around summertime and all that sort of thing. But now it's actually been moved forward which usually is a good thing, but it's being moved forward to February of 2019. Yeah. February, the dreaded February, Mm -hmm. where Hollywood puts their movies they aren't sure about. That's right. Because here's the thing. The Mummy opened in America to a paltry $32 million at the box office. This film cost over $125 million to make. So to have its big opening weekend be only $32 million is sad, number one. Number two, every Brendan Fraser Mummy movie made more than that on the opening weekend. <laughs> you would think, like, Russell Crowe, Tom Cruise is going to be huge. What, what did the other one have? Brendan Fraser and that one... British guy from Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yeah. Like, yeah, those other ones had, like, nothing. (laughs) So, so, like, that that doesn't sound good. So, was the film a bomb? Technically, no. The Mummy Pacific rimmed it. Yeah. Because America, the Mummy was a huge bomb, but in the international markets, people shat themselves for this fucking movie. That makes me like, sad for the rest for of the real. world. What did they in see? International markets. The film opened in 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 America and then simultaneously in like sixty four different nations, and in those sixty four nations, the Mummy made in its opening weekend one hundred and forty one million dollars. <laughs> Man, that makes this film. Tom Cruise's best ever opening weekend worldwide. Oh my god. That basically makes the mummy Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim bombed in America. It did so-so. It was a wonderful movie, but just people weren't excited to go to the theater to watch a Guillermo del Toro giant robots fighting monsters that appear from the ocean movie yeah. in America. People weren't ready for that. But in China, it was, at the time, the biggest movie ever. (laughs) Like, everyone in China saw Pacific Rim ten times, and it made so much, such a ridiculous amount of money that suddenly this American company was forced to go, so we have to make a sequel to this movie people don't like? (laughs) This is awkward. Like, people didn't like Pacific Rim, but because China liked we have to make another one? (laughs) <laughs> Are you serious about that? So so America is making a huge, massive sequel to Pacific Rim because of China. That's fascinating well, to me. Good, good. Thank you, China, for that one, at least. I love Pacific Rim. But The Mummy. The Mummy was a huge hit worldwide. It just bombed here. So now Universal is in a tough predicament. We need to make a sequel to this movie that people don't like here. Mm-hmm. Like, apparently, Bulgaria and Europe are just eating up Tom Cruise right now, but America just has had enough. They've tapped out. Yeah. But, yeah. So I, yeah. I don't see what they could have liked. I, I don't see it. 
this is just your typical action movie and there's nothing exciting about it. But I imagine in like, if I lived in South Korea, if I lived in Vietnam, what was that nation that loved listening to us on SoundCloud? Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam. Yeah. If I was living in Vietnam. And we still have grim. fans in Vietnam. Yeah. We're huge in Vietnam. honey. We're huge in Vietnam. Sweet. If I was in Vietnam and I lived kind of a poor life and things looked grim, you bet your ass. I would want to see a big budget American action film starring Tom Cruise. Yeah. Damn! Damn, honey. What did you hear that? Say? No. She said Tom Cruise is big in uh, Vietnam because Tom Cruise is the average size of most Vietnamese men. <laughs> oh. Well, there goes that fan base. <laughs> yeah, you just ruined our fan base in Vietnam, honey. Did I? Yeah, you did. Or did I just strengthen it? So you think there are people in Vietnam going, oh, yeah, no, no. We'll have to to see, yeah. People in Vietnam, let's let's get your hate mail, your hate mail for Natasha. Yeah. Okay, let us know. Yeah, to be clear, uh, Vietnam fans out there, my wife said that and not uh, Bunny or I. We didn't say that. It was my wife. Just to be clear. Damn, it was, was a big pile harsh. of meh. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I got for the movie. I, I'm not. I was gonna write a massive plot synopsis, then I saw the plot, and I'm like, yep, nope, nope, no point. I, I I don't blame you. I don't I don't blame yeah. you. The Mummy, the movie sucks. Hopefully, Universal be, will be able to turn it around. But how yeah. how did uh, she throw up Mercury? How um, did she no do idea. that? You know, that I don't. he embalmed her with mercury. That's in your veins. Okay. Yeah. When you throw yeah. up, shit doesn't come out of your veins. Yeah. Not but, unless you but, have a serious, serious problem. Yeah. But let me tell you, let me tell you the thing that upset me the, the most about this film. There are a lot of things that upset me about this film, but let me tell you about the one that hurt the most of all. Yeah. There should be a law. That says, if you are making a shared cinematic universe, you need a fucking post credit scene. Yes. Or at least a mid credit scene. You're building a world here, bitches. <laughs> no, you're just fucking spoiled, Steve. No, I sat through. I sat through a, an amazingly long ass end credit roll. Waiting for an end credit scene. Yeah, I, 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 I'm cheated. Yeah. Also, all of my fans in Vietnam are, are just like really just hating you right now. Yeah. Not only did you make fun of him, but then you're like attacking your husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine in Vietnam that's bad. Or maybe not. I don't know anything about Vietnam culture. Yeah, exactly. So, I know a lot about Vietnam culture. They play 60s music all the time and there are choppers everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's smoke, and all of these American men are doing drugs and then shooting people in the trees. Okay. I've watched a lot of films about Vietnam. It's you. People in Vietnam right now are converting to Islam just so they can clear the jihad on you. You're going to get a me? jihad. That's yeah. <laughs> yes. Natasha I'm going to mark jihad. that off my bucket list. <clears throat> nice. nice. I put a my jihad bucket. on you. Yeah. <laughs> the bucket list is just full of buckets. So that's it for this week. Um, now, Bunny, let's talk about next week. Yes. I have three ideas okay. for movies. Either one of these would be a good episode. Either one of these films we could do for different reasons. In my mind... And possibly there's in, been the heartache and pain. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we've been singing a lot this episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've been singing a lot. You know why we've been singing a lot? Because it's the circle of life. <laughs> hati yata, hati yata, hey. I don't know the African parts. 
and they move us all. Hati yata, hati yata, hey. Simba. <laughs> you remember that meme yes, we I saw? Did. Yeah. I'm going to have sex with Natasha. No, you're not. Yeah, I know I'm not. <laughs> and then when I come, I'm going to get some on my thumb and I'm going to rub it on her forehead and say, okay, Simba. See, it wasn't that. It was fingering and then. Oh, yeah, fingering. Yeah, that's even, that's even better. Can I finger you? No. For science? <laughs> no. Fingering for science, though. Boom. That's our free band name for the week. There we go. Fingering yeah. for science. <laughs> See, I didn't even have a free band name this week. You're you helped me out. Yeah, thank you for that. So, Bunny, I have three different movies we could do for next week. I want you to pick which movie. In my mind and in Natasha's mind, there is a movie that possibly you might favor over the other movies. But really, you're a wild card, so you could pick either one. There's one that I think that our podcast would want to do, and... I'm going to try and not crack up during this, but I'm going to try and be serious. Here you go. Three movies possible for next week. Number one. The Tooth Fairy. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Fuck you. Okay. It wasn't an offer. Oh, damn it. Okay. Number one. Baby Driver. Recent film. I've talked about it at length with pretty much everyone I know. It's about it, it's a typical crime film. There's nothing that exciting about it. It's about okay. a young man and he's a getaway driver and he wants to get out of this life, but he's going to do one last score, one last crime. And there's a Tarantinian. There's a lot of crime bosses and double crossing. The and it's Kylo it, Ren, right? Hold on, uh, hold on I believe hold on. so. No. Uh, plot twist: uh, Shamalama and Shamalama Ding Dong plot twist. Mini driver's son. That's why it's called Mini, baby Yeah, baby driver. driver. Yeah. It's Mini Driver's infant child. Yeah. That's driving. Yeah. <laughs> but the driver has tinnitus, so there's a constant ringing in his ear, and the only way that he gets that ringing out is by constantly having, like, an iPod with him, and he's constantly listening to music. And so the filmmakers use the soundtrack to turn it into a musical. Essentially, it's a crime musical, And all of the action sequences have this music through it, the music that's playing throughout the entire film, and it's supposed to be amazing. It's supposed to be the greatest soundtrack of all time. It's supposed to be a wonderful film. So that's Baby Driver. Mm -hmm. There's a cough, cough with that. But anyway, Baby Driver. Number two, Mike Myers in The Love Guru. You got to remember... Mike Myers did Austin Powers, which was su- su- a surprising hit. So then he did uh, Austin Powers 2, which was an even bigger hit. And then he finished a, He turned it into a trilogy with Austin Powers 3, and that was a massive hit. And, oh, my God, Mike Myers is amazing, and he's a genius. What is he going to do next? And he spent years and years and years working on this film, and it is supposed to be the worst film of all time and in no way funny and offensive and horrible, and everyone hates it. I I have seen it. It's not good. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. So, so far, we've got Baby Driver, and Mike Myers is the love guru. It seems shitty enough that we would have fun with it. Here's the third film. Okay. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix, and it stars Danny Trejo and Rob Van Dam. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Three Headed Shark Attack. Oh, no! Again, wrestler looks- Rob Van Dam. Yes, wrestler Rob Van Dam. RVD. Stoner. <laughs> yeah, stoner wrestler Rob Van Dam. Oh, this is this is tough. And they named him Rob Van Dam in ECW because they they thought that he looked just like a shorter Jean Claude Van Dam, which is he why they kind of him. did. I thought, and I never understood that. But recently, I've been looking at him, and I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I can see it. I can kind of see it. It's in his face. He's got this weird RVD as this weird bone face, this weird <laughs> facial structure. That like, okay, I can kind of see Jean Claude in there. Wow. That's it. 
let's eliminate Love Guru. Okay. Because that fine. is the weakest choice. Yeah. Either one of these films are going to be fun, but for different reasons. Baby Driver, it seems like it's going to be a really fun movie. Three-Headed Shark Attack looks like it's going to be a blast, but not because it's a wonderful movie. Let's go with Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Call it! Baby Driver. Yeah. Great. So we're doing Baby Driver next week. Mini Driver's Child is on a rampage of destruction. Because we haven't done, you know, Baby Driver, even how you describe it, it sounds like a more serious movie. Yeah. You know? And yeah. we haven't done, what's the last like kind of serious movie that we've done? I can't think oh, of I don't, I don't freaking know. Maybe Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah. I mean, mainstream. I'm trying to think of like a mainstream film, because this is a big film. Yeah. It's a big mainstream film. So let's do Baby Driver. Sweet. So next week we are doing Baby Driver. Next week for homework, we are watching The Vice Guide to North Korea. Oh. Notes from the bookstore returns with the story of how I got my managerial job. Yes. We've got a brand new music themed uh, 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 reoccurring bit that's going to happen next week that's going to involve um, Little Orphan Annie. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's going to be exciting. So next week we have a really exciting episode planned for you, so you should tune in to that. But before we get to it, hi, Eleanor. I'm just wrapping up the podcast. I, I, I just want to say, looking back now at this episode, wow. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I think this has been a pretty good episode. I think. If I, if I I end it with, this has been a pretty shitty episode. No. No, no, because they're all great. Look at what you did, Steve. I think this has been a pretty damn good episode. I think that this has been a pretty damn good episode. Hell yeah. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and for Natasha, and Maxwell, and Bella, and Eleanor, and the rest. <laughs> and the rest. Are here on Gilligan's Isle. I just want to say thanks for say, listening. Say bye bye. Say bye bye, Eleanor. Bye. Oh, that was close. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Oh, that was perfect. That was, yeah, bye bye. That was torso, but still, you get there. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Do 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 do